Mine's also just a video and I turned the audio off. If you could play it for me. Okay, I have no disclosures. You guys already heard my really short title. So our patient was a 36-year-old healthy female who had a large um, symptomatic splenic cyst who was 12 weeks pregnant. This was originally diagnosed during an ED presentation for shortness of breath a year prior. She had had a CTA, and it was negative for PE, but um, it had noticed the splenic cyst at that time, incidentally. She then had follow-up imaging, both CT and ultrasound, that um, re-demonstrated a large um, cyst, 9 centimeters by 8 centimeters, and it had grown on interval imaging at six months with ultrasound. And then this is just a CT scan axial showing um, the splenic cyst. So she had followed up in our clinic, and the plan was for surveillance of the cyst, but during that time, the patient had become pregnant. So the maternal fetal medicine team expressed concerns for splenic cyst rupture during her pregnancy due to size. And um, there is some case report um, that there is a high risk of um, perinatal mortality if splenic cyst rupture in the third trimester. So due to that, our, um, after talking with maternal fetal medicine, our plan was to take her to the OR and um, uh, excise the cyst and do an omentopexy into the cyst cavity. So this is us taking her to the operating room. We had um, positioned her in a hemilateral position and placed four ports. Um, Obviously, we uh, placed these ports superior to this, which was um, her pregnant uterus. Um, and then we began by um, mobilizing the splenic flexure. After we began the splenic flexure mobilization, um, then you can see that we began the splenorenal ligament dissection here. We began, um, we wanted to fully mobilize our um, spleen here in case we needed to gain control of the hilum and the vessels. We could do this um, fairly quickly uh, if we needed to, if we got into any bleeding complications. Should have sped this up to four times speed. Um, after this, you um, can see us. Then we begin a medial dissection. We'll begin to take some down some of our um, short gastrics and um, work our way up to the superior pole of the spleen. After we had mobilized the spleen adequately and felt like we could get control of the hilum, we then began um, with laparoscopic ultrasound to try to um, characterize uh, the cyst cavity and figure out where the best place of entry was going to be. We then used our um, hook cautery to enter the, um, the cyst, and you can see there's copious amount of, of fluid that we're suctioning out here. We then... Um, used energy to begin to take off the um, anterior wall of the um, splenic cyst. And you can see we're just continuing to come around this anterior wall and taking it around circumferentially. We'll completely detach this and remove this as a specimen at the end of the case. Um, and after we removed this, we ensured hemostasis and um, irrigated out this area.
This is obviously a complete with the anterior wall gone. Um, after this, we then wanted to complete an omentopexy. So you can see us um, here shortly taking the omentum and we're gonna secure it to the diaphragm um, over top of the spleen um, with some interrupted vicral sutures. After we had um, secured it in several places, we then added some fibrin sealant to both help with hemostasis and hopefully to keep that momentum in place. And then we proceeded with um, placing a 19 French Blake drain and then um, closed in standard fashion after that. Um, the patient's postoperative course was uneventful. She had normal fetal heart tones in the recovery room and was discharged post-op day two. We also performed a fetal ultrasound on the day of discharge, which was normal. She was doing well at her follow-up in our clinic, and her pathology just showed a benign, um, simple epithelial cyst. So in conclusion, these splenic cysts can be safely managed um, during the second trimester of pregnancy with laparoscopy, and definitive management of these can eliminate the risk of potential hemorrhagic shock with splenic rupture. It's a very uh, rare entity, but something I think if you're working closely with your maternal fetal medicine colleagues and they're concerned about, then... Um, taking these patients to the OR is the right thing to do for them. So thank you. Thank you.